Folks, the picture you see in front of you is that of uh, House of Representative member Devin Nunez out of California. And Mr. Nunez is our modern day Joe McCarthy. Now, if you don't know who Joe McCarthy was, let me give you a little information on him first. Joseph McCarthy was an American politician who served as U.S. Senator from the state of Wisconsin from 1947 until his death in 1957. Beginning in 1950, McCarthy became the most visible public face of a period in the United States in which Cold War tensions fueled fears of widespread communist subversion. He is known for alleging that numerous communists and Soviet spies and sympathizers had infiltrated the United States federal government, universities, film industry, and elsewhere. Ultimately, the smear tactics he used led him to be censored by the U.S. Senate. The term McCarthyism, coined in 1950 in reference to McCarthy's practices, was soon applied to similar anti-communist activities. Today, the term is used in reference to what are considered demagogic, reckless, and unsubstantiated accusations, as well as public attacks on the character or patriotism of political opponents. That's who Joe McCarthy was. I submit to you that Devin Nunez is our modern day Joe McCarthy. Now, Devin Nunez has been carrying water for Donald Trump ever since he was part of uh, Donald Trump's uh, transition uh, committee. Mr. Nunez, upon uh, resuming his duties as head of, I believe it's the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, I'm so not Senate, I'm sorry, House of Representatives Intelligence Committee, has uh, done nothing but uh, attempt to uh, give cover to uh, Donald Trump in every way necessary because of the Mueller investigation into uh, Donald Trump's potential uh, collusion uh, with uh, Russia in order to uh, become elected president of the United States. Now, uh, six months ago, Mr. Nunez attempted to pull the wool over the American people's eyes by stating that he had uncovered uh, information regarding unmasking of uh, people uh, that uh, had uh, been surveilled uh, by, the, by our intelligence uh, community illegally. It was found out that uh, after he had held a press conference uh, stating that he had discovered information and was taking it to the White House, that he in fact had gone to uh, the White House previously, uh, been given some, let's say, uh, biased uh, information by the White House, and then the next day purported to have discovered this information on his own and was taking it to the White House. When uh, his duplicity uh, was discovered, uh, he uh, was, I'll say, forced to step down as chairman of the intelligence committee that uh, he served as chairman on um, and uh, was subject to an investigation by the ethics committee. Now, um, how the ethics committee did not find this guy uh, in contempt, okay, and guilty of uh, collusion with the Trump administration, I, I just don't understand, particularly given the fact that uh, he was given the information by them, okay, he uh, lied and said he had discovered the information on his own, and then attempted to lie to the American people. For me, basically, that was enough, but again, that's just me. Um, the Ethics Committee, I thought, was uh, composed of an equal number of Republicans and Democrats. If that was in fact the case, at a minimum, there should have been a, 
a neutral finding, but according to uh, the information that uh, I read, and that uh, is subject to interpretation, he was uh, cleared of uh, any ethics of violations. Again, I don't know how. Okay, Mr. Nunez has uh, now come up with a, a memo. Um, it's now known as the Nunez uh, memo that uh, was generated not by himself, but by his staff uh, coming out of the Intelligence Committee. But there was uh, absolutely no um, Democratic input into the memo that he generated and the uh, Democrats felt so strongly that uh, the memo was uh, biased, had uh, misinformation or omitted information that they generated their own memo. Because the committee um, is dominated by uh, Republicans, uh, number one, the committee voted to uh, release the uh, memo to the public after review uh, by the president. And number two, they also voted uh, that the uh, Democratic or minority uh, opinion memo uh, would not be released. Number three, uh, they voted not to uh, allow the entire committee to review all of the uh, data, which uh, includes the uh, FISA warrant uh, information. And number four, uh, they also voted not to have the director of the uh, FBI or his representatives appear in front of uh, them in order to answer all of the allegations uh, that were uh, given in the memo. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, this particular memo was partisan. Now, your Fox News uh, and various right-wing outlets have uh, been screaming to the high heavens that uh, this memo um, is the uh, smoking gun uh, that is needed in order to uh, clear the decks uh, in the Department of Justice and the FBI, i.e. Uh, getting uh, rid of uh, Rod, uh, what's his name, uh, Weinstein, that's not Weinstein, um, the Assistant Attorney General for the FBI, um, and uh, replace them with someone, in my opinion, that would be more favorable to Donald Trump in either uh, severely restricting the latitude given by uh, the uh, special prosecutor, Mr. Mueller, or uh, straight out uh, dismissing him. Well, the memo came out, folks, uh, a four-page memo, and I'm going to attach, uh, if I can, a copy of the uh, memo, but um, I've read it myself, and uh, this memo is a bunch of crap. It is not the giant explosive uh, document that, uh, again, Fox News and various other outlets have purported it to be. It's not bigger than Watergate. Uh, and it basically, um, in my opinion, uh, corroborates uh, the fact that the Department of Justice and the FBI uh, well well into an investigation of the subject of the uh, FISA warrant, uh, Carter Page. Now, if you don't know what the FISA court is, the FISA court uh, basically deals with uh, American citizens that uh, are uh, working in collaboration with uh, foreign actors, i.e. Uh, Russians, uh, Turkey, Iranians, anybody outside of the country. It's an 11 uh, panel uh, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, it's a group of 11 judges who rotate uh, on a weekly basis so that uh, no one judge basically rides shotgun on any FISA issue. Now, the FISA warrant was issued uh, about a year and a half ago on Carter Page because he was uh, making uh, various trips uh, to uh, Russia, and he was in contact with uh, people that have been confirmed to be Russian spies, and he was providing them with information. That was when the uh, FBI, I'm sorry, that was approximately 2013. That's when the FBI 
uh, put this guy up on um, their radar and started monitoring him. Carter Page was being monitored before he joined the uh, Trump uh, campaign as an unpaid advisor. And uh, Donald Trump himself uh, mentioned that uh, Carter Page uh, was uh, a foreign policy advisor, even though later on he claims not to even have known uh, Carter Page and that Carter Page had nothing to do uh, with their campaign. But uh, bottom line, uh, Mr. Uh, Nunez is trying to allege uh, that uh, the FBI illegally uh, monitored uh, Carter Page. Now, the FISA court has a responsibility to review all FISA warrants, but let's just uh, take it uh, from the uh, beginning of the process. An individual uh, comes up on the uh, radar uh, of the FBI for, uh, let's just uh, say it's uh, colluding with the foreign governments. Line people then uh, pick up the ball and start to do an investigation. When they believe that they have sufficient information in order uh, to uh, obtain a FISA warrant, that information is uh, reviewed by the head of the uh, FBI and also the Attorney General. Now, in this particular case, uh, since the Attorney General uh, was collude uh, was prohibited from all matters Russia, the Assistant Attorney General would be the one uh, that would uh, review the information. Now, I don't know about you folks, but in uh, jobs that I have had, anytime I generate documentation on a subject matter and it's reviewed uh, by my boss, um, especially when we have to go to a higher authority, um, it is nitpicked to death to make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. And I believe, this being the FBI, uh, that same policy, that the same thing was done here. Now, the initial FISA warrants were signed off uh, by uh, FBI Director Comey and uh, the uh, Attorney General. I guess in this particular case, uh, since it was Comey, well, 2000, yeah, but it probably was Lynch or someone from um, her office. That was the initial. Then, every 90 days, the current warrant must be reviewed, and in order for it to be renewed, you have to have brand new information. You can't use the same information that you used in obtaining the uh, FISA warrant or uh, in any previous extension. So there had to be progress as far as information was concerned uh, in order to get a warrant renewed. At the same time, a new judge or the judge who is currently serving as the uh, FISA judge uh, must review that information and they do ask questions. Now, I've been told that the documentation uh, provided in all four of the uh, FISA uh, warrants and renewals were anywhere from 50 to 60 uh, pages deep. So this is not just uh, you writing a laundry list uh, and handing it to a FISA judge and getting it approved. The FISA judge has to uh, review all of the information and if he has any questions, uh, you have to answer. And if your answer is uh, not sufficient for him, he will deny the warrant. Now, four different judges signed off on the FISA warrant and the extensions, okay, four different judges. And the FISA warrant preceded, preceded the Steele dossier uh, by a good three months. But Mr. Nunez is claiming that the Steele dossier was the uh, basis for the issuance of the FISA warrant. That is not true. 
proponents of Mr. Nunez's position also are, are claiming uh, that uh, the FBI directors or temporary FBI directors in the past that would have been uh, McCabe and uh, Yates uh, basically were uh, rubber stamping uh, the continuance of the uh, FISA warrant on a Carter page. Nothing could be further from the truth. Again, you have to submit brand new information to the FISA judge in order for him to consider extending the FISA warrant. Now, you're going to have to read the uh, document for yourself because I'm not going to sit up here and read the entire document. But you can see, if you read it, uh, how this thing was nitpicked. Uh, the main uh, item that I'm going to point out to you is their attack on uh, Mr. Steele and they claim that uh, he had bias against uh, the current president. Now that could be true if you read it out of context and don't know uh, his actual position. And his position was given in testimony by uh, GPS uh, during uh, a congressional hearing uh, where they were called to, uh, to testify. Mr. Steele was concerned about Donald Trump being elected president, but his reason for concern is that he believed that Russia had uh, somehow, well not somehow according to his dossier, uh, Russia basically had turned a Donald Trump, that they had uh, something on Donald Trump, both uh, financially and uh, obviously some uh, salacious acts that had uh, been committed while he was in Russia. And again, I point you back to uh, the Nunes memo and then I will point you to the Steele uh, dossier uh, in order to see exactly what I'm talking about. But Given the fact that uh, this memo was strictly about Carter Page being um, illegally uh, surveilled uh, by the FBI through a FISA warrant, that memo is woefully, woefully short of any type of uh, actual proof of uh, their suggestion, I'll call it. They hide behind the fact that the information uh, that they are basing um, this memo on is uh, classified top secret and it cannot be revealed. And that is in fact true. But if you are given a full reading as uh, the uh, minority uh, leader in that particular committee uh, was given, it became clear to him again that they cherry picked the information and that everything was above board as far as obtaining the uh, FISA warrant. So now let's see what uh, the right wing uh, people are going to do uh, with this quote unquote a bombshell of a me memo. Donald Trump is reported to be highly upset because he was led to believe that uh, this memo was going to be the smoking gun that was going to allow him to uh, be able to get the uh, Russian collusion investigation halted. Apparently, his attention span was so short that he didn't uh, read uh, the memo, or if he did read it, he didn't understand it. But uh, the bottom line is uh, this is going to have nothing to do with uh, Mr. Mueller's investigation, and as a matter of fact, Mueller and the collusion investigation are not even mentioned in this particular memo. So, Mr. Nunes has done one thing. He has left no doubt whatsoever in my mind that he is a Trump finger puppet. He is willing to do uh, whatever it takes in order to try to give Donald Trump cover. What 
makes me more concerned is the Republicans are colluding with Donald Trump to try to keep him in power for God knows whatever reason. They have forgotten the oath that they have sworn uh, to the Constitution and to the American people uh, to do the best job they can, irregardless of uh, party or opinion. And uh, now uh, we're seeing all of this come to light. Our hope is that the next election, God forbid that uh, they don't get all of the, or a majority of the uh, jerry-rigging out of the system, will turn the House of Representatives back over to the Democrats. And it'll be at that point, I believe, that uh, Donald Trump uh, will see impeachment hearings. Now, if you're not aware of it, just impeaching a president is insufficient to remove him from office. He must be impeached by the House of Representatives, but he must be convicted by the Senate. And unless the Senate is uh, flipped from a Republican to a Democratic, um, in my opinion, they more than likely will not convict him, although uh, there is precedence as far as uh, Nixon is concerned because the uh, Republican Senate, after Nixon uh, was impeached, gave all indications that, uh, I take that back, after the Republican uh, House of Representatives, I'm sorry, the Democratic House of Representatives gave all indications that they were going to impeach Richard Nixon. The uh, Senate uh, gave all indications that they were going to convict. So that is why uh, Richard Nixon uh, basically uh, stepped down. Once the articles of impeachment were issued, uh, he resigned the next day. Well, I don't know if that would be the same case as far as uh, Donald Trump's concerned, but we can only hope. But then again, the guy uh, coming up behind him, Mike Pence, is a piece of work all on his own. And he's getting a nickname of, I know nothing, Mike Pence, because apparently he knew nothing about anything that was going on and feigned ignorance. Be aware, he already has a 2020 uh, presidential uh, campaign uh, committee all set to go if something um, were to happen to Donald Trump, i.e. Uh, resignation or impeachment.